looking live at the government center in Kyiv. There have been reports of gunfire in that government center. Russian troops appear to be moving in from the outskirts in of the capital city. Thousands of Ukrainians are fleeing the country and some though are hunkering down and staying put. My old classmate Joel Wasserman joins us live from western Ukraine. Joel's an American living in that part of the country. Joel, the first question for you, how are you doing? Tomorrow, uh, yesterday was was a very difficult day. Um, especially last evening, I was very worried that my uh, that my girlfriend would not be able to get out of Kiev. Uh, she's on the road to Western Ukraine right now. Her mom is still in Kiev, where Ukrainians are in battle against the invader at this as we speak. And Joel, we, we spoke briefly yesterday. Uh, your girlfriend, you said she wasn't able to get out um, by car. She was able to get on a bus. How was she able to make it out there? Because we saw images of roadways completely blocked up. I have to tell you, Julia, that is a great question. Um, she told me that, you know, she was, she, she was walking and basically, as I understand, she basically just flagged down a bus that was headed to the resort town of Yaremche in the Carpathian Mountains. And the Carpathians are a good place to be right now. Uh, it's far from, far from the Russians, far from zones of likely airstrikes or violence. How, uh, I, I hope she gets to Lviv in, uh, from there in relatively short order. I'm not sure how. She has train tickets tonight. We'll see what happens. But if she's safe, she's safe. And I'm at peace with that. Joel, we, we've seen the, the footage coming in, the missile strikes. We've heard reports of gunfire, over 100 Ukrainian soldiers dead, more than 300 injured. Uh, you were down in the market just moments ago talking to people in Lviv. What is the sense of Ukrainians right now? What's the feeling? Uh, a lot of uncertainty uh, here in... So I was in one of the bazaars in, uh, in the center of Lviv here. Um, in the bazaar... You know, I'm sorry, my cat is not cooperating with the live interview right now. It's all right. Uh, Yuri, say hello to the Carolinas. <laughs> um, a lot of uncertainty. Folks don't know where, uh, where supplies are going to come from in the future. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert in logistics. I'm not an ex expert in refugee dynamics. I'm worried that with lots of people leaving the country, um, you're going to have a lot of supply chain issues like we saw in america during the pandemic but i mean if the people if the roads aren't open if the people aren't there i'm worried what that's going to mean people are not panicking right now things are orderly things are calm things are nervous but um there are lines at pretty much atm but they're well under control and I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, things are okay here in Lviv right now. They could get significantly worse in the coming days, but um, my fears are really for those um, under Russian gunfire in Kyiv, the beautiful capital right now. And Joel, you, you said you're, you're not an expert, but you have a heart. You're a human who feels you were in Kyiv. That's where you originally were a few weeks ago before you fled to the western part of the country. We know some Ukrainians are staying there like your girlfriend's mom. Can you speak to the resolve of these people? Because we've seen the defense minister tweeting out, use Molotov cocktails, stand up for our country, tweet the, the movement of Russian troops. Can you speak to the resolve of these Ukrainians who are staying put in places like Kyiv despite the Russian advance? The Russians may achieve a military victory, but they will not, they will not be able to, to defeat the resolve, the people of Kyiv. Um, I know people who, who have taken up arms. Um, I'm terrified of what that's going to look like because fighting invader is not pretty uh if you look at how what fight what it has looked like for people to fight against the russian invader in donetsk in chechnya in uh the early 2000s um it's a very scary scenario but um what the russian invader has waiting for him in kiev is blood and death and 
the Ukrainian people and the people of Kyiv will give him all of that that he can handle and even more. Joel, we've seen President Biden uh, put sanctions on Russia. U.N. leaders put sanctions on Russia. Is it enough? Do we need to give more help? What's your thought? I think that it is very difficult to shift Vladimir Putin's calculus at this point because he has done something that so many people in the West and in Russia and in Ukraine and in the expert communities thought he would be absolutely crazy to do. Um, what I think America can do is, number one, make Russia pay for their crime. Number two... Um, provide uh, economic and military assistance as they can to the Ukrainian people. And number three, accept Ukrainian refugees, um, because there are going to be a lot of them. And these are good people. They, they want to work hard. They want to, they want to, just like Americans, they want to, you know, build a decent life in, in a free country. And if, if Americans give, Ukraini uh, give Ukrainians who are fleeing from the aggressor the chance to do that in America, we, we will not regret it. Joel, I, I have, we're limited on time, and I have one more question for you. We, we spoke last week, and you said you're staying put. You, you feel at least safe now. Are you still feeling safe? Have you thought about getting you and your girlfriend out of the country if things continue to worsen? I have thought about it. Um, air raid sirens in the yesterday morning. Were, were a little bit jarring. I think they were basically just tests or just general announcements of martial law and the emergency situation. Um, if I need to, I'm confident I can get to the Polish border eventually and, and get out of the country. But right now, I, I'm an American who knows this place. I speak the local languages. I can I can tell I can tell stories to people like you and people like your viewers, um, and I feel I, I, I feel that I have a mission uh, to do what I can, uh, helping the people of Ukraine in that capacity and by and in any other capacity I'm I'm able to do so. Well, Joel, um, again, thank you for joining us, and please stay safe. I will. Thank you.